What's up, you crazy metalheads and you rockers in this crazy world? Hey, if you're not holding up your horns for metal or rock, you're doing it totally wrong. And what I would suggest, listen to After Eden. I'm Al Din. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. This is episode number 109. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing James along with Chris Austin from the band After Eden. Welcome, dudes. Hey, man. What's up, man? What's up, brother? Hey, not much. How are you guys today? We're here, brother. It's the weekend. We're ready to rock. That's right. That's right. Someone's got to do it. First off, I'd like to ask you guys to let me know what you guys do in the band. Chris, I know you're the drummer. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm the lead vocalist. My name's James Me. We also have, uh, they're not here with us today, but we have Bobby Swain plays bass guitar. Uh, we have uh, Roy Haley lead guitar. And uh, Chris, of course, is the drummer. He's the one that holds down the beats in the back. That's right. That's right. That's the engine right there. And then you got all the other stuff to add all the fuel and just go with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's the timing of the band. I'm the looks. <laughs> there you go. That's right. See this? The hair. There oh. you go. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to play the part as it comes to you. That's you know? it, man. Well, I would like to ask you guys, what was the first piece of music that you were introduced to? First piece of music introduced to or one that influenced us? I mean, well, like to, 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 to me, it, it's a it's a different. I mean, I grew up in the South, so, uh, you know, Elvis Presley was big. But believe it or not, um, I, I liked a lot of 50s music growing up. But the but where I started really getting involved in hard rock or heavy metal, uh, believe it or not, I saw Poison's Talk Dirty to Me video. That that was the one that kind of catapulted me to man. I would like to do what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say that was probably one of my early influences. What about you, Chris? I think I think growing up with my parents, I come from a very musical family. Of course, I'm I'm like the only drummer in my family. But uh, my mom and my dad from an early age. Uh, you know, I mean, The Doors, obviously, is my all-time favorite classic band. I mean, of course, you know, Zeppelin and, you know, both both my parents listened to all that. And, I mean, you know, growing up, listen to Alice Cooper, and which I still love very much. Uh, and, of course, you know, getting older, because I've been playing drums since I was three. So, uh, self-taught, never had lessons. Uh, but, I mean, growing up, uh, you know, when we, I think, uh, you know, just playing all that different music growing up, of course, I can remember being... 10 years old when uh metal health came out choir ride and uh pyromania by Def Leppard, which high and dry is actually my favorite album i was already wearing that one out but i can remember having the cassette deck and it you know laying there at night and it flipping back and forth just playing those just and it made me a heavier drummer made me you know rethink things but anyway but the early stuff was probably the doors Jimi hendrix uh of course you know when van halen came out motley rat all these guys you know we were we were we were growing up in that time period in the eighties where we caught all of that when it first came out, those are influences. You know, we love those, you know, even though, you know, speed metal thrash, I come from that background is my favorite type of music. Uh, death of course, are being my favorite band of all time, but uh, I love all of that. You know, I like a lot of different kinds of music, blues, jazz. I mean, Steve Ray Vaughan and double trouble, you know, growing up in Texas, I got to see those guys. So anyway, maybe that answers your question. So, <laughs> I, I liked a lot of Buddy Holly, believe it or oh, not. Oh yeah, yeah I, yeah, I loved Buddy Buddy Holly. So and so, when when we say we have diverse musical tastes, yeah, I, I could go anything from a Buddy Holly to Megadeth and anything in between. I'm I'm good with that. Oh yeah, that's really cool. How do you guys feel about tapes making a comeback? We were just talking about cassettes. You know how some bands are now producing cassettes again. How do you guys and feel about that? Alex, I love it, man. I, I am a cassette, CD, uh, vinyl, vinyl <laughs> addict, man. I mean, yeah. I, I, I still collect it. I, it never went away. You know, I still have a cassette player in my truck that works perfect along with my CD player. And I switch, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sickness with me, you know, and I, but, uh, I'm, I love it. I love the vinyl, the cassettes, CDs. I, mean, I, I love it all. I mean, it's just so, and that, you know, we hope to actually put like our first album under the gun on, vinyl at some point and then uh, of course our new album which you know we'll talk about and we've just finished recording uh called bites like whiskey we would like to do that one too but yeah to answer your question i am a huge cassette 
CD vinyl fanatic still. That's awesome, dude. I collect eight tracks. You know, I've only got probably four in my collection, but I'm still trying to find more. Nice. Well, my, my dad turned me on to that too when we were a kid because, you know, he, when, when we were kids, I mean, I, I used to have, I think <laughs> Kiss's first album was my first eight track, which is my favorite Kiss album. And, uh, and then I had the Ace Frehley solo album. And man, I wore those eight tracks out. I, I don't even have them anymore. I tore them up. So, you know. the, the eight track I remember as a kid, and I don't know what band this was by, but it was called, the song was called The Purple People Eater. <laughs> and that, that's the that one song. I remember. Do you remember that? I do. It's an old one, right? It's from like yeah, yes, 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 yes. I was waiting on you to say, you know, Boris the Monster Mash. You know, that, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's really cool. Before yeah. we get into talking about the new album, I was going to ask you guys, how did the band meet? Like, how did everybody get together and say, "Hey, let's do this"? Uh, I, I could probably take this one. Um, so the band as it stands now, how do we meet? Myself and Chris and Bobby were in a previous band uh, in the 90s. It was called Burning Eden. And actually, I would say I probably was one of the founding members of that band because Bobby came on as the first bass player. But we actually started that band with myself, uh, two guitarists and a drummer at the time. And we didn't have a bass player. And Bobby was the first one that we found. We were actually playing basketball one day. And he just happened to say, hey, y'all got a band? And you got to remember, this is back when we were 18, 19 years old. And uh, he was like, well, I can play bass. And sure enough, he came on board. And then as we started, that was actually probably the first real band that we were having. And way back in those days, it was called Devonshire. That was our first real band name. And as we started to actually gel as a band, we quickly realized the drummer wasn't up to par. And so we started putting out feelers and that's where Chris came along. And what, what year would that have been, Chris? I think it was 92, I think, summer of 92. Yeah, 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 right around 92. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And so from 1992 until about 96, we were in, we, I mean, the band changed the name many times and it changed a lot of different characters along the way or people that was involved in the band. But myself and Chris and Bobby were in it pretty much from that point forward. And then in 96, we all kind of took a hiatus. You know, life happened, that type of thing. So in 2019, Bobby, the bass player, was actually the one that just called us up out of the blue and said, hey, y'all want to rock again? And we were like, well, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, the three of us have always had that, that camaraderie, that jail but it was always finding that that fourth or fifth member because, you know, I like five piece bands a lot, but it's just hard getting a, one guitarist, much less two. And, you know, even since we reformed back in 2019, we have now went through three lead guitars. We're on a third lead guitarist now. Uh, and hopefully this one sticks. His name's Roy Haley. He's phenomenal. And I wish he could have been here today. Yeah, but, yeah, I wish Bobby and Roy could have both been here today. But it, it hey. Happens, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so how do we meet? Chance. I, I would say that you know, uh, it was a chance that Bobby met us that day playing basketball, and it was a chance that the rhythm guitarist that we had at one point in the band was Chris's cousin, and, <laughs> so, and, and, and Bobby's my cousin too, bass player. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, and all of them got. It, it was crazy because that day I remember I think I had fish cut in my yard or something, and these guys they were practicing in a warehouse right down the house, right down the road from from where I rented my apartment. They drug me out of the house, man. You're gonna, you got to come down here and play, dude. So I got in there and I, just to audition, you know, got in there and played around. Before I left, it's like, hey, man, you're in the band, right? You're in the band, right? They wouldn't let me leave till I agreed to be the drummer. Yeah, so, you, you know, know. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's it's weird, Alex, though, because you know talent when you see it. I, I, you know, I do at least, and and when you see it, you're like, okay we'd be making a huge mistake if you walked out the door, you know, but, but, but the whole idea is to convince the person that's got the talent that, Hey, all these other guys are talented too. So, yeah, I mean, you know, James doesn't give himself enough credit. This guy behind the scenes and everything. I mean, he is the driving force of the band. I mean, he and I handle a lot of the, the business stuff, obviously, but this guy right here is the driving force, the band, awesome lyricist. I mean, my opinion, one of my favorite lead vocalists. I mean, you know, it's, it's, he doesn't give himself enough credit, you know, and I, we appreciate all of us, you know, because yes, we're all for not to toot our own horns. We're, we're very good at our craft, you know, now 
it's like the thing I tell everybody is because I, I'm more humble than anything, you know, and as I get older, you know, we're all humble, you know, and uh, the thing, I, you know, I, I have so many heroes and so many influences. A lot of them are friends of ours in other bands is, you know, I have so many people come up, man, you guys are great. You guys are awesome. But my thing is this, and I'm like, you know, I appreciate that. And I love the comp. Thanks guys. We love our fans. We love all of that. But the number one thing is, is to be humble because, you know, it's like I tell people say, I, I, you know, I have people come up to me and say, man, you're, you're a badass drummer. Okay. And I appreciate that. But it's like, I tell them, you know, uh, I, I may not be the best drummer, but I'm damn good at what I do, you know, and like, like he's damn good at what he does. So is Roy, so is Bobby. And we've, throughout the years, we've had some talented musicians in, in this band, you know, like he said, even in the nineties, man, we played the the new Daisy down on, we were on Bill street just about every weekend playing in Memphis. I mean, we went to BB's and sat in years ago and in the in jam off of BB King's place. They used to have a blues jam off. We'd be down the road playing the new Daisy theater, rock the shit out of it over there. Then we'd go down there and, and just come up on stage and, and just jam with BB, you know, but we, we did, you know, we, we played a lot of shows, battle of bands, all this stuff. And, you know, we're just blessed to, to be able to do this again. I, I know 2019 when they're, they're going, Hey man, you want to do this again? I'm like, shit. Yeah. I, mean, I am ready to do this again. Cause I mean, music is, is in my blood. It's in all of our, but we, we love this. I mean, and you know, we like to entertain people being on the stage, being behind my drums is that's my happy place, man. That's it. And creating the music. So, you know, and, and like you, we appreciate guys like you, you're yes. our brother and, and, you know, in metal rock, man, I mean, we love this because like I said, it's, it's give or take, man. We give you a push. You give us a push. That's what it's all about. You know, it Absolutely. is. So, well, my next question for you would be for you, Chris. Show me your kit. And my would, kit? And, and, yeah, and I would like for you to play your favorite uh, drum beat. Oh, he's behind us here. Oh, let's, let's see here. Let me get out of the way. Do I have a decent pair of drumsticks? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of kit is that? Is that a sonar? It, it's, it's a Pearl Export set. This is my studio kit that I use What's down nice? here. I keep down here at our studio. I have three drum sets. I keep two at my house and keep one two, one here. So a lot less, you know, movement, having to move things back and forth. Absolutely. Oh, the sound's not coming through. Yeah, it's not coming through. <laughs> Get it, Chris. Get it. Gotta love the noise gate. It, it's canceling the sound. Hmm. <laughs> two, two horns up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, All right. I don't get to do that much, especially when we're doing it. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird because the noise gate actually canceled the sound of the drums. Uh, what did? The noise gate. Oh, oh shit. Because it was so loud. So, so you, you couldn't hear me playing at all? No, but I can see your arms flying around, seeing <laughs> double, double bass going on. I promise I was playing. You know, I wasn't running backing tracks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're not doing a music video with me right now? <laughs> That's right. There you go. But anyway, my next question is: What can you tell me about this new album that you guys are putting out, and how is it different from Under the Gun? That's an excellent question. Um, well, first of all, most of the songs that we're doing right now are songs that were written back in the 90s uh bites like whiskey the title track is an one of the songs that our new four piece with roy on guitar we have actually come up with so it's one of our newer songs um so that's probably the first difference is it's featuring a song that's brand new that we just created in 2023 so i'm excited about that there's a lot of creativity in this group and i'm looking forward to not only this album but the next one 
where we will have more and more new songs. But, you know, it. how is it different? I think anytime you have a new guitarist, it adds a little bit of different dynamic. And for me as a vocalist, you know, just having that um, that partnership with the guitarist where, you know, it's got to be the right sound. And Roy really brought it on this EP. Uh, I knew I was the one that actually auditioned Roy here in the studio on his first day. And he was playing one of the songs that actually is on that album. And within 10 seconds, kind of like what I was saying earlier, you kind of know when somebody has it what you're looking for and i knew right then and there and i told all the guys i said look i said he played 21 years and i said he, he's the man he can do it which is the and, title of one of our songs by yeah way. 21 <laughs> years is on that album and uh you know the songs i would say they're similar but different uh bites like whiskey features uh, a ballad each one of the eps has a ballad uh, that's kind of our forte. You know, we'll do one ballad and there'll be a couple of heavy songs and then a couple of moderate songs in there. So, the, you know, our 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 template is kind of the, the same. It's very similar. So the one different different thing between Bites Like Whiskey and Under the Gun is, yeah, the newer songs that's on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we put a lot of we put a lot of different, you know, things into like, a, you know, we've got some blues elements. I mean, some. Uh, some of my stuff is like a jazz fusion. I mean, it's it's a it's a lot of different things in our music. Bites like whiskey is probably one of the heavier songs, and I'm very proud of that song too because that that's we all the songs are new songs. But I mean, uh, as far as Roy being the member of the band, he came a uh, newer member of the band. He came in and and put his touch on songs that we had worked on previously with other guitar players. So I want to yeah we want to stress that they are new songs. But I mean, you know, the songs that we've been working on for years piecing stuff together here and we this four piece has made it our own so uh yeah this album is going to have a lot of a lot of different sounds and stuff but it's still got that hard plus it's got some blues it's got some uh just it's just got a lot of different feel to it i'm looking forward to hearing it and i'll put a review out on that as well awesome man well we'll, we'll make sure we give you a give you a definite credit in the album too there brother <laughs> cool. i'm honored man totally that's Likewise. Great. Very cool. Let me ask you guys this question. What's your favorite thing about being a musician? Uh, I, I guess I'll take that one first. Uh, favorite thing is actually the performance on stage for me. Uh, e even though, you know, everybody gets the jitters or things like that. I mean, that's kind of normal. Uh, what, what I always like is being able just to look out and see a crowd and you know i don't know how much you know about my back history but i spent a lot of time in uh, the indie wrestling circuit I, I was a pro wrestler for 20 years so i'm used to large crowds and things like that but you know with the music it's it's when you have someone that and and in the wrestling business it was always if they're chanting your name you know they're into the match in the music business, if you see them swinging back and forth or, you know, they're singing along or things like that, that's when you know you've actually touched someone's emotions in the music business. And I always like to see that. And it, it's hard when you're up on stage because everybody, it just looks like a sea of people. But I always try to pinpoint a few people while I'm singing just to see their reactions. And, I, you know, for me, that's probably the biggest reward. Yeah, I mean, uh love being on stage like that. there's there's no place i'd rather be. The, the creative process i love that a lot being obviously one of the uh instrumentation you know being being one of the musicians in the band i mean uh i love creating the songs but the big payoff is, is playing for everybody but i i love just creating music for people i mean because you know music is about emotion it's about everything and of course it comes out in our music but, you know, if you touch somebody's heart, you know, say they have something going on in their life or whatever, like the rest of us have, or you just, you know, you need that pickup in the mornings like I do sometimes. I'm headed to work, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, crank it up, you know, and it gets that fire up under me, gets me good. That's what it's about, you know. But like James says, I love the reaction to the crowd. And like so many of our heroes have said, you know, it's it, it's like an energy. I mean, you're you're giving it and you're getting it back. And, you yes. know, when, especially when they know your songs, they, they uh, you know, 
say they they're, they're singing our lyrics along with us. I mean, man, there's nothing better than that. Or seeing people, you know, like, you know, I'll throw out sticks or something after the show, whether it's kids or it's, you know, somebody that's 20 or somebody that's 70. I mean, we love all of our fans. We love, we call our fans our Edenites. And I mean, we, uh, we loved it because we know we would not be here without them. And I mean, we want to give them the best product that we can and we want to entertain people. It's entertainment. I mean, it's, you know, let's get away from this crazy ass world that's going on. Let's get on that stage and let's kick it. You know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, kick your fucking teeth down your throat. I mean, that's my, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, anyway, but yeah, entertainment, it's, uh, it's just doing it for the people, you know, it's, it's, I, I would say behind the scenes, the thing I enjoy the most is actually the camaraderie because, uh, you know, Chris came into the band as a stranger. I didn't know him. And over the years, I mean, just being in a band with somebody, you automatically become friends and just the, the behind the scenes antics and goofing off and poking fun. I like that. I mean, I, oh, I mean yeah. I'll look back on that later, many, many years from now. And the two things I'll take away is all the individuals that were in the band and how much time I enjoyed spending with them and creating with them. But also, like I mentioned earlier, getting on that stage, the lights hit, and then all of a sudden everybody is cued on you, you know, and as a singer, everybody's immediately first song, they're looking directly at the singer. <laughs> and, and I know it's that, I know that, but at the same time, it's just like it, like Chris said, an energy. And, and as, as the set list progress, the better that they respond, the better that we're able to uh, uh, give back basically. Well, you know, it, it's like, like I said, you know, like for me back in our younger days, you know, I would, you know, you, you're, you're always going to have that nervousness or, uh, you know, anxiousness to get up there. I can honestly say nowadays, I mean, it's for me, it's more of just, I'm ready to go, man. I'm, I'm pumped when I get on that stage, you know, I am ready to go, you know, I'm on my P's and my Q's. I'm ready to rock, man. And that's what it, that's what it comes down to for me. So yeah. let me ask you this question. I haven't asked this to anybody yet, but. What band do you find to be the most iconic? Wow. <laughs> well, well, what genre? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, metal. you got to start there. I would go with metal or rock, whichever. Well, you know, with me, with me being like, like the thrash side for me, there's so many I love. I mean, I love Testament. I mean, and I love Exodus and all these, you know, Sepulchre and all these bands. Of course, you know, Death for me are the, you know, forefathers of, of a lot of that genre to me. You know, as far as that goes. Now, as far as metal goes, man, that can be defined in so many ways. Because I, mean, uh, I define it by album sales. So uh, answer your own question by saying who has the highest album sales, because obviously they touch the the most lives. That that's how you get an icon status. Is that you know you've been doing it for a long, long time, and you have a lot of albums out, and a lot you know. Kiss comes to mind as one, oh, yeah, obviously, because they've had the longevity, but also they've had the following the entire time. Um, I, I, even though I personally, Van Halen, I would mean, say I, Kiss yeah, is yeah. not in my top ten favorite bands. I would say <laughs> when you're looking at Icon, it probably is like not Kiss. <laughs> Kiss. Uh, when your reputation precedes you, Guns and Roses. You know they 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 are icons. Um, and then there are individual icons like Slash, one of the best guitarists in the world by far. What's so, your favorite ZNR album, James? What's the Guns of Rose? Oh, it's got to be Appetite for Destruction, the first. That's the best one. That's, see, that's, yeah, see, that's, that's the only album, album by then yeah. that I, I really like. I give credit where credit's due, but you know, we always joke about this. He's more of the GNR guy. I'm an LA Guns guy. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, I love LA Guns more, but it's a, uh, it's it's a t you know it's, it's personal preference you know uh do love kiss a lot bobby loves kiss a lot um you know motley i mean rat i mean i, I love those guys ozzy you know alice cooper uh yeah just, alice cooper definitely fits into what i think an icon is because of the longevity and just the uh, amount of albums he's put out and the following he's had. I mean, to go from the 70s to, I mean, he's on tour right now. I mean, you're talking 50 years. That makes you an icon. Motorhead, yeah. Lemmy, and the boys. Lemmy was, there you go. Was gonna, Lemmy was Huge definitely Motorhead. one of the best people out there ever, you, know, you could ever meet. Yeah, love Motorhead, man. It's uh, There's so many. So, I mean, I you know, so many 
so many we have so many influences so many people that we love just like you know my list of, of drummers are, are endless you know guitar players i mean the uh you remember Sabotage from Florida? I mean, Chris, oh, yeah. Chris Oliva, rest his soul, was, from a drummer standpoint, my favorite guitar player of all times. He was cut way too short in 93. I mean, he was just a master of the the metal and then putting the, the classical with it. Do you remember you remember Sabotage, right? Yep, absolutely. Love Sabotage, man. They, uh, you know, but Andy, that's, that's just to name a few, so. Well, I got 10 minutes left here with you guys, but if you want more time, we can always do part two. We may do a part two. Uh, we're very talkative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're people, people, man. That's, you know, yeah, we, that's the only we way love, we, like I said, we're, uh, you know, we're very much extroverts, you know, we're not introverts. Matter of fact, here comes our bass player this time, my cousin, Bobby Joe, come on over here. <laughs> Grab that white chair over Bobby. there. Set it back. Grab that white chair and set it back here. Look what the cat dragged in. Yeah, that's right. As a matter of fact, one of our okay, best one of our best cover songs, I told you, by the way, that nobody plays but us. Always late and work the way. Hey, it's better, <laughs> it's better late than never, as people say, Bobby. Welcome to my show. There you go. We'll say nice hey, shirt. Nice hey, shirt. Hey, look, look, look at that shirt. This is my cousin, Bobby. He's our bass player. Welcome, Bobby. Welcome, Alex. I'd like yeah, to now you can put him on the spot. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll we'll have Bobby answer this question since you guys okay. talking. You guys have any upcoming shows? Not at the moment. <laughs> like I said, we I, just I thought Bobby was going to answer. Oh, that I'm question. sorry. Well, you know, we just finished recording the second record. We're in the been in the process of trying to get it mixed and trying to get everything together. We're actually rehearsing right now to get. The rust knocked off after about a month, you know, and yeah, we're planning on some shows here hopefully pretty soon. So I'm ready, they're not. <laughs> hey, <wait. laughs> I'm always ready. <laughs> well, what could I expect if I were to go to a show with After Eden? Well, who who do you want to answer that question? Anybody. <laughs> Anybody. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, Bobby. Uh, uh, what do you expect? Uh well, we have a mix of uh, covers and original material, but we really focus heavy on the original material. Uh, we usually have about an 80-20 split. That's the way I always try, try to tell the guys. We're going to do 80% original, 20% cover. Uh, believe it or not, we're energetic on stage. I oh, we, yeah. we like to move around. Uh, we also like to cut up, though, because every now and then, you know, hey, I have the microphone, so I'm I'm jabbing fun at Bobby. I'm jabbing fun at Chris during the show. And, you know, just just that camaraderie that I told you about earlier uh, that ex that, you know, is behind the scenes. You know, you get to see that on stage because, you know, we're, we're a team. We always have been. And and that's the way we perform on stage as a team. James, this oh, question is yeah. you. When it when it comes okay. to when it comes to microphones and you're performing, do you like to take your own microphone or do you use the one that the venue has provided? It well, I, I'll well, I'll say it this way: I ask in advance, <laughs> so I know what they have in advance. But uh, sometimes I will take my own because I have been in situations where they have a microphone that is not a good microphone, and I know that. But I don't tell them that because I don't want to offend them. I'm very humble, very nice, but I'll just change it out myself. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much my own technician once I reach the stage. So uh, if I need more wires or cables, I've already brought them with me. So for the most part, we use our own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool because I've got a Shure SM58 that I like using for my vocals myself. Yeah. So. yeah. Would you say There's SM58? Nothing... Yeah, it's in it's in my room. Yeah. But... Yep. Yep. That, that's, yeah. Absolutely. Good microphone. Excellent microphone, no problems at all. I've only used it maybe like five times so far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to keep in tip top shape. You know, that's just how things are with me. I want to let things last for a while, you know, instead of wearing them out within the first usage, you know. Well, you know, a long time ago, one of the best microphones I ever had was made by Electro Voice. It was an EV mic. And uh, I do not remember the model number or anything, but it, it, it's it's obsolete now, but that was a phenomenal and durable because back in the day, I was pretty reckless. So, you know, I, I put a lot of wear and tear on microphones, but, you know, now a little bit more calm. So, so the engineers don't have to worry as much if I'm up there, I'm not going to bang the microphone into the stage or anything. That's yeah, where we have a lot more 
we're having a lot more fun these days than, than even back when we were back when we were babies doing this. We were 18, 19 year old kids, you know, and we're we're having a blast, man. I mean, it's you know, everybody's getting it. the things that we talked about for years or they heard this. It's like they, they get to see that, you know, and that's man, that's that's awesome. You know, whether it be our, you know, parents or, or you know, kids or whatever, you know, we're just having a great time, man. Hey, Bobby, where do you see the band in five years? That's a question for you, Bobby. Five years. Yeah, where do you see the band in five years? Hopefully, hopefully on the road, <laughs> playing coliseums and signed to a record label. Yeah, sign, <laughs> signed to some, something big. I hope. Maybe I'll have a drum tech, you know, where I don't have to, you know, set my gear up and tear it down all the time, you know, like the old days, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say, if you guys come to Georgia, I'll go to your show. Awesome, man. Absolutely. Did you did you get your sticker? Yes. Awesome. Yes, I did. It's inside the underground noise web scene bag of stuff known as goodies. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to show off that bag of stuff in a different webisode. So be on the lookout for that one. All right. What would you guys like to say to your fans that are probably listening to this show? Oh, everybody's everybody looks at me. Yeah, all right, I'm the leader. That's fine. Uh, well, first of all, visit us on our website www.aftereden.info. Uh, that usually gives you the the update of where we are, what's going on. Uh, we have our bios on there. You can learn a little bit more about the members of the band. Uh, also has links where you can purchase our merchandise, uh, t-shirts, like we mentioned, stickers. Believe it or not, you can go in there and you can get an After Eden beach blanket. If you want a shower curtain, skateboard. You want it, one of these backdrops like our backdrop? Backdrop. It, it's it's all in there. Um, but for our fans, you know, right now for us is just the beginning. This To me, this is just the beginning. I, I know we have the Under the Gun EP out. Well, Bites Like Whiskey's coming up, but we've written a lot of songs. There's a lot more stories to tell. So oh, yeah. this is just starting. So in five years, uh, we're, we're going to still be having these conversations, hopefully more on a regular basis. And uh, we're going to move this thing forward. You know, we want to thank everybody that's stuck with us through everything, whether it be our family members or, uh, you know, put up with all the, the crap that goes into being in, in, in a band. I mean, in a of course, our Edenites, our fans, because like I said, it, without them, we would be nothing. I mean, that's, you know, people that people that we don't know are our biggest supporters, you know, and we love each and every one of them. And, and we're trying to get out there, play more shows. Uh, merchandise is uh, after Eden.threadless.com uh, or through our website. I'll give you a link on there. Uh, T-shirts, like James said, uh, you know, you can, you can get the Under the Gun album on there. And eventually we'll have Bites Like Whiskey available, too. So. But uh, like I said, that's that's just, you know, that's what I've got to say. I'm wondering about you, Bob. Man, we love you. Come see us. Oh, Short yeah. And simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being patient, you know, because it, it's it, it's grueling sometimes. You know, people just don't know behind the scenes the kind of nightmares that you put up with. But uh, it, it's worth it. And that's why we stick to it. And and, you know, we're we're coming. We're coming at you hard. I'm telling you. So, you know, we're. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't understand just how much hard work goes in to being in a band. Uh, a, keeping a band together, but B, keeping a band together long enough to be productive enough to go on stage, put out EPs or albums. It, it's a difficult process. So every band out there that's doing that, I got much, a lot of respect for. And, you know, it, a lot of people think it's just really simple. Oh, well, just give me a microphone, I'll sing. That's not the way it works <laughs> right. at all. There, there's a whole lot that goes behind the scenes and the creativity, the at that aspect alone, very, 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 very difficult. That's so I, I, I enjoy all that, but but there's a lot of hard work in that. I want to send some shout outs to some of our friends too. Uh Rose on Red, uh, they're from around here. Uh my buddy Randy Stash and his band Relic from Texas. Relic. You need to check out Relic. Uh, check out Roses on Red. Our buddies Fates hate. Fate hates me. Yeah. Uh, Slamhound. Slamhound from Memphis. Yeah. Uh, from within, we've got some really cool friends. And one, one that you had on here that I pers personally like that I, uh, 
I've got to say the curse of hail. Those guys, we send a shout out to those dudes because they are they got it going on. So uh, Very cool. And Alex, we appreciate you, man. You're you kick ass, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, well, guys, we're back again for part two. All right. Two. That's right. Two. Two. Okay, cuz. Take two. They're small. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys were uh, talking to your fans, letting them know what's going to be happening in the future and everything. Um. I really can't think of too many other questions to ask you guys other than, do you have any final words for Underground Noise Webzine? Well, A, support Underground Noise Webzine. Let's start there. Absolutely. Uh, uh, support After Eden. And actually support all of your local musicians. You know, it, it is amazing the number of people that will pay exorbitant amounts of uh, money to go see acts, the large acts but they don't realize those large acts started very, very small. And, you know, it, it doesn't take any money to like or share a post or share a video from a band. Uh, I always try to do this whenever I see somebody putting something up because I know the struggle that goes behind it. And, you know, I'm, I'm one where I think, you know, everybody can succeed, you know, but it's just so many times that people – look at bands that are playing at the local club and they're like, oh, well, I'm not going to go pay $5 to see them. 90% of the time, they're better than some of the larger acts. And that's what I've noticed. Just being out on what I call the independent circuit with a lot of indie bands, you see a lot of talent out there. There are a lot of talented people out there and, and they just need the support. Yeah, I mean, he's right. It's like I was saying earlier, you know, it's a uh... All genres of music, man, we're all in it for the same thing. We have friends from all genres of music. Uh, uh, my buddy Hunter Cross, I want to send out a shout out to him too. You need to check him out. He's uh, he's he's great, man. I mean, you know, these we have so many friends around here that just we're trying to help give them a push too. I mean, because it's that's what it's all. We're all in this together. We've got to help each other out, man. But uh, yeah, support you know local music. Uh, you know, support you know, just th these venues that take time to do this, you know, to come out. So everybody, you know, makes some money and, 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 you know, I mean, it's like we say, the, these are, you know, we have day jobs, you know, this is, you know, we would love to be doing this full time, but this doesn't pay the bills. I mean, I would love to sit behind my drums 24 seven and play and create music, but it does. But the more support you have, the more, you know, those possibilities are there. So, you know, Hey, you also have to tell your local venue, Hey, we want to see live bands. Uh, in our area in particular, there's not enough venues that are featuring live music. Or especially our genre of music. Yes. Uh, I mean, we are in rural West Tennessee. Uh, I mean, country's pretty big around here, but to be a rock Rap. or metal band in this area, it, it, it's a little tough. So we have to venture out to the larger cities a lot of times. And, and we love that. We love all over. We want to be, you know, man, I can't wait to make another trip to LA, you know, or something. I mean, you know, that's that, or San Francisco or something, you know, but, uh, I mean, just all over, man. I mean, there's great venues everywhere, but it doesn't matter who you are, what style of music you are, whatever. I mean, you know, send, send everybody some love. I mean, cause that's the, you know, and, and we, we won't, you know, we ask the same thing. So. Yeah. That was going to be one of my questions and I totally forgot to ask it about your local music scene, but you guys basically summed it up for me on right. that. Yeah. Well, you, you know, when, when you think about uh, supporting local acts, you got to think back like to Motley Crue's very first EP that they released. And, you know, a lot of people didn't didn't really look at it that much. Right. It, it wasn't big out of the gate until after after they had done something good that everybody started going back listening to what they had done before. A lot of Guns N' Roses songs that uh, they played on the Appetite for Destruction album they were playing in the clubs. So that tells you the level of talent. Sometimes it's just about opportunity. It's about luck. It's about who you know. And some bands do not have luck opportunity or they don't know the right people, but they could be just as talented as, as Guns N' Roses in, in the clubs or Motley Crue in the clubs. Uh, yes. You just got to get, they just have to be heard. And a lot of times it's just takes that one chance, that one song, that one minute, that one moment. Yeah. Well put. No, thank you. <laughs> well, 
if there's anything else you guys would like to say to me, let me know. Uh, well, you know, Alex, I mean, we, uh, you and I have spoken too about, you know, a lot of things you've got going on in your life, you know, congratulations on that, man. Uh, you know, by all means, you know, keep us informed on that. You know, we're, we're pulling for you, man. You know, and, and you know, by all means, you know, tell your friends about us too, you know, cause you're, you're, you know, you know, we, we, Hey man, we might come do a show with you. I mean, that'd be great. You know, that'd be excellent. Yeah. I would have to get <laughs> over my friend in Colorado and just like, dude, we're going to be doing a show sometime soon. Where, when, wow. Right. Or, you know, your buddy, your, your buddy that's the drummer for Monstrosity, you know, think about me, you know. Well, shout out to Mr. Lee Harrison. There you go. Out. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've known that dude for 14 years and still going strong. Awesome, man. He's he's, he's great, man. I like Monstrosity. They're, they're cool, man. Yeah, Death Metal is one of my favorites. I'll never stop listening to it. I love that, man. Hey, hey tell him to send me a t-shirt. <laughs> he'll probably want you to buy one yeah yeah but that, that's what we tell people you know hey man give me a cd so we're here give me 10 bucks you know <laughs> yeah for real that's usually how it goes trust me we know man it's that merch is not cheap and we do it ourselves on a regular basis you know we know so, so alex i'm gonna flip the script on you real quick so tell me about some of your musical influences there you go what, what got you to liking metal what got you to liking hard rock just what whatever right T tell me three. Just, just name three. Let, let's keep it to three. Let's keep it <laughs> right. concise. Iron Maiden, Jews, Priest, Mortification. Oh, yes. Oh. Mortification, you better believe it, buddy. Yeah, old old Mortification. I don't mean oh, like the happened. latter years. I mean, Triumph of Mercy was a good album, but a few albums after that. Break, was, break the Curse. Know. The first one, self-titled, uh, you know, uh, post monetary Affliction, uh, Scrolls mm -hmm. of the Megaloth. Yeah, Scrolls of the Megaloth. That was a huge game changer for me. That was the first one I ever heard. Do what? Scrolls of the Megaloth was the first album I heard by them. But when I got into high school, I heard Suffocation. Have you listened to Break the Curse, their very first one? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Self-title was killer, too. All right, so Chris, same question for you. Just three bands. Three bands. Only three bands you can name that, that you really think influenced you or really made you like this overall. Doors, okay. Death. Oh, good and great, man. I, I get to pick three. Yeah, only that? three. There's three? only three. Uh, quite right, man. <laughs> I, I would have to go, and this is weird. Buddy Holly, because I mentioned him earlier. Wasp. Oh yes, <laughs> Wasp. Uh, th that's a great leap, I know. And probably I, I would pick an obscure or, or a, a, a mid card band like, I don't know. Uh, Maybe a, a kicks or a faster pussy cat. See, I get to name four because I asked the question. So. See, see, I like a lot of the eighties new that's wave too. We were going like till Tuesday. That's I didn't <laughs> yeah, well, I'd love to tell you guys. Thank you for uh, giving me a portion of your time this afternoon. What we missed that? What'd you say about? Oh, I was saying I would like to tell you guys. Thank you for giving me a portion of your time this afternoon. It's been a blast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. How, how many minutes we got left here? Because we got one more question for you, Alex. You can ask, and I'll answer. All right. Name I'm, I'm one. Wondering. Name one band that you like that is not in the genre uh, that people would be like, "Oh, he likes that band. That's weird, <laughs> right?" Well, uh, you mean a, like a guilty pleasure? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll name mine first. Aha, the band Aha. Great. Okay. Believe it works. Yeah. Okay, one that comes to mind would be, wow, there's so many to choose from. See, that's uh, the same thing yeah. I had. All right, this might be out of out of the reach, but at the same time, this dude was an icon to me. Prince in the Revolution. There you go. Yes, very good. Yeah. What, what about you, Chris? Uh, you know, like I said, it's, uh, man, I'd have to go with the outfield. Okay. Outfield. You know? Till Tuesday. I thought you were going to say Bananarama, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> Bananarama. Hey, you know, you know, those ladies were fabulous. You know, the Bangles. I mean, you know, Heart. Eighties Heart now. <laughs> yeah, and the Go Go's. Go Go's. Go. Yes, I like the Go Go's. Go Go's. I actually listen to them. Uh, the Runaways. Yes, another Love great. Love the band. Runaways. Yeah, I've been listening to 
I can listen to almost any genre of music or something. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you who. Enjoy it. Uh, you know, Kitty. Our Canadian metal girls. I love Kitty. I haven't listened to them in years. The only and thing I, I, I love, love them love is their debuts. Girl School was good, you know. So It was a very raw album, but at the same time, it had a lot of anger to it, you know. Wait, what was that? The, their uh, debut album, Spit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they had a lot of anger behind it. And I was like, man, these chicks are pissed. The fuck oh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they were, you know. And, and I mean, to me, it all it all got better. Funeral for Yesterday is probably my favorite album there. I love all their stuff. I have it all. But Funeral for Yesterday was like their fourth album, I think. Third or fourth album. It's great, great stuff. But yeah. you know it's Great music because it, it, it invoked an emotion out of you. Because, I mean, you just said, man, it seemed like they were pissed. That's Probably the, that's probably what they were going for. That's probably the energy that's coming out of that song. And and that's what's wonderful about music is how it affects others and affects their emotions. And that's what I love about it. Right. Absolutely. And another oh, band I can mention real quick, another band would be Suffocation. Because when I first heard the song Mass Obliteration, holy shit, that was the biggest game changer for me in my entire see, life see, 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 now, now, see now you're stirring over that's that's my area james is like who you know yeah. <laughs> he's doing brutal technical death metal and it's like this man looks so many great bands man reanimator man you know condemned for eternity that album is i've got that in my cd player right now you never reanimator condemned for eternity awesome thrash album man you know speaking Very of good, like, Speaking of bands that started with the letter R, the band Rat, they're they're interesting because you know that song Round and Round. Mm -hmm. He never That's one, you That's yeah. one of our cover songs. Let me let me ask you this: Why does he never tell you why? <laughs> because Round and Round. That's why. Oh, I, hey, I guess we need to ask Stephen Pearson. Why? That. You know, he's why? Doing, why? He's, yeah, he's doing a lot of podcasts here. Like or, Bobby Blotzer is one of my favorite drummers too. So. You know, I would yeah. say to him, I, say, I would say this to him, round and round, I'll tell you why. Is your answer going to be, because round and round, that's why? Yeah. <laughs> because you're spinning round and round, that's why? <laughs> that was good, man. I, yeah, I, I don't think it was meant to give you the definitive answer. But, but, it, it was to keep you to buy the next album so that maybe yeah, the answer yeah. will be a couple of albums from that, now. <laughs> Alex, that was great. If I was behind my kit right now, I'd, g I'd give you a rim shot. And with it. <laughs> well, the, the drums are pretty round, if you ask me. Yeah, there you go. They're, they're around you. They're around you. Around, 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 around. You know what? Yeah, goes, comes around. Yeah, how, how round oh, hey, you why? Why? <laughs> Round here. Uh, <laughs> this was a lot of fun, man. We appreciate it. And uh, like I said, uh, hope when when are we? Uh, when are, when are you thinking, uh, you know, about uh, the new Bicycle Whiskey? When, we're trying to think when we might it might be available. November, December? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm thinking probably mid-November. I mean, we still got to finish it up as far as polishing it, you know, getting the final mix and mastering done. And then we got to take it to production, of course. So I, I would estimate probably mid-November. Uh, you can see the new EP from After Eden, Bites Like Whiskey. Yeah, we'll, awesome. send, we'll, send, we'll send it to you. and Maybe you'll do a review for us on that one, too. Yeah, yeah, as I mentioned before, I'll definitely do a review on that one. Awesome, brother. And by the way, before we depart from this, I would like to let you guys know I'm going to write a parody of that song, Round and Round. I'm going to call it Square and Square. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just remember what Huey Lewis in the news said. Love of it. It's hip to be square. Remember that. <laughs> That's right. Got two uh, ticks in a parasite. Well, love Huey, man. Oh. Hey, thanks again, you guys, for your time today. It's been really, really awesome talking with you. Thanks, brother. You too, man. Right, have have a good day. It. We'll be in touch, man. Sounds good. We'll have a future interview sometime. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Cool.